Donald Trump is headed south of the border today. The GOP candidate says he will meet with the Mexican president later this morning, something that just over a year ago nobody thought would ever happen. Federal investigators are beginning to piece together a timeline leading up to a deadly commuter train crash in Hoboken, New Jersey, early yesterday. First, we're going to take you live to Washington, D.C., where the world champion Kansas City Royals are getting ready to meet President Obama at the White House. Belgian authorities say they will give us an update at 7 a.m. our time. We'll bring you that here on KCTV5. We will have updates throughout the day as well. Uh, my key to the game tonight, one big difference maker in this game. His name's Julian Edelman. We saw him before the game warming up on the field. The guy missed seven games with a broken <laughs> foot. Tonight, 10 catches, 100 yards. What he does is he plays that slot, opens up the field for Rob Gronkowski, and makes it really easy on Tom Brady. Pretty simple. Put a bow on it. Julian Edelman, the difference maker here. Republican Congressman Kevin Yoder is joining us live from Washington, D.C. this morning with reaction from the president's final State of the Union address. Congressman, good morning. Pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Well, I thought it was interesting last night, Congressman. In his final State of the Union address, the president said he failed over two terms to unite the two parties. But my question is, do you think someone like Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee, who the base of your own party does not support, would actually do any better if elected? Well, we've got a quote for you. The president said the American economy is the strongest in the world. Now, Ronald Reagan asked the same question way back in 1980. But do you think Americans are better off today than they were four or even eight years ago now? Yeah, Congressman, I think it's safe to say that the American uh, people in the economy was struggling in 2008 when George W. Bush left office as well. But, hey, I want to pivot now to a, a little bit of a lighter moment here. Kansas City Chiefs have a football game on Saturday. Not sure if you guys have heard about that in Washington, but they play the Patriots. Who do you like? Sally, in the film, uh, your character Doris has been called funny, lovable, and real. And I actually heard you say in an interview that Doris has a lot of you in her. A lot of arrogance here in the city of Foxborough, Massachusetts. But I guess when you are what some people call the evil empire or the Yankees of the NFL, that kind of comes with the territory. Almost too many storylines to cover. Last night I had the opportunity to sit down with a man whose father played for the Patriots and who's had the privilege of covering the Patriots for 30 years for our sister station in Boston. His name's Steve Burton. Here's what he had to say about how seriously the Pats are taking our Chiefs. Well, Jenna, I I've heard you say that you are both nerds for our national park. So I'm wondering, where did this all come from? I, I was actually married in Kennebunkport, Maine a couple of years ago, and I can't tell you how many times my mother-in-law, Donna, has said that she's seen Mrs. Bush walking on the beaches really early in the morning. So why are the outdoors so oh, yeah, she... important to the Bush family? Well, Jenna, I, I wasn't going to bring this up. I know you're easy to tears. Um, your grandfather, uh, <laughs> President George H.W. Bush, actually wrote me a note before my wedding. We got married at St. Mm. Anne's, and he said the key to a long oh, yeah, marriage... Did. Yeah, he did. I have it framed in my house. He said the key to a long marriage is putting each other first, and I thought that just spoke to you guys so oh, well. Oh, that's so no, you sweet. Do. You are trying to make me cry, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> in case you haven't heard, a political candidate known for making outlandish statements is making headlines yet again. This is the front page of the Philadelphia Daily News newspaper this morning. The paper is getting a lot of attention for comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Certainly not something you want to see or hear, especially if you're just waking up, but it's just the latest backlash after what the presidential candidate said about Muslims living here in America at a rally in South Carolina. A new poll found that Donald Trump's popularity is fading and fast. In the Associated Press poll, 7 out of 10 people say they have an unfavorable opinion of Donald Trump right now, including half of voting Republicans. Those numbers consistent across all genders, ages, and races. Trump is meeting with GOP leaders right now to try and figure out how to win over some of those voters before the July convention. We are live here at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass., where 80,000 fans will descend upon this stadium tomorrow at 435 Eastern, 335 Central for the divisional game between the Chiefs and Patriots. Now, I want to draw your attention to the field surface here. The last time the Chiefs played at Gillette Stadium, this was actually real grass. Now it's field turf, a real rubbery soft surface it is wet right now it's expected to be wet tomorrow we'll see how that plays a role in the game and alex smith's ability to scramble and that sort of thing but tom brady who is now 38 years old requested that he get field turf instead of actual grass because it's easier on his 38 year old knees we will have more from gillette stadium throughout the morning updates on doug peterson and jeremy macklin as well midnight voting tradition at dixville notch started back in 1960 now 
It's pretty interesting. They've picked the last four presidents successfully. So based on the results from last night, we're looking at either Bernie Sanders or John Kasich as our president. How do you think those results will hold up as we head into the election in November? In the movie, your character, Georgette, she's the first wife, but your ex-husband's uh -huh. second wife wants to give you back your ex-husband, and you're okay with it. Is that right? That's correct. By the way, I did get a huge kick. I thought you did a great job with your accent um, in Thank this movie. You. Where'd that? How'd you learn that? Where'd that come from? Uh, Julianne, you just won an Oscar for Still Alice, a wonderful mm -hmm. performance. And I think there's this, this notion in Hollywood that women of a certain age have a tough time getting the good roles. But you seem like you're really just getting started. So I'm wondering, <laughs> what's your secret? You've done so many different roles. I mean, I'm talking about Boogie Nights, I mean, The Hunger Games, which I'm sure your kids know you from, nine months back yeah. in the 90s, even Hannibal, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Any project that really sticks out and you can't say, still Alice. Kiefer, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I, I know that you grew up with your mom as a kid. So I'm wondering, what was it like, as you've said, spending 14 hours a day with your dad for eight straight weeks? It must have been pretty special, right? Well, Kiefer, it's a pleasure speaking with you. I know that you're a big fan of Peyton Manning. Of course, he just won the Super Bowl. I want to pay you and your family. I know. How cool is that? How cool is that? His second Super Bowl. I wanted to pay you guys a compliment. They call the Manning family the first family of football, and I think it's safe to say the Sutherlands are one of the first families of the acting world. You and your father are extremely talented. So congratulations on the film. I well, look forward really to seeing kind. it. Uh, Maggie, I understand uh, that you guys work together uh, kind of back in the day now on, on Psych. And I understand that you had a pretty interesting yeah. interaction the first time you met. You went to do a, uh, a read and you stepped into the ladies' room. And, and tell us what happened next. <laughs> you know, you, you just mentioned this, and I, I know you've had 21 years to think about this now. Do you feel like you blew that case? Do you think that another prosecutor puts O.J. away 21 years ago? No. Point. I, I retired. I retired from competing. I, I don't mean to stop you. Can we just look at the, see the TV monitor right there? I feel like Danny DeVito and twins. <laughs> <laughs> a final question, Jeff. Uh, you know, I loved you in Gettysburg. My two siblings went to Gettysburg College. You've had a, a long career. Fly Away Home was one of my favorites uh, back in the old days. But Dumb and Dumber, commercially, a huge success 20 years ago. Where does that rank for you in all the work that you've done on Broadway and film and HBO and that sort of thing. I have a funny joke, though. Can I tell you a funny joke? Please. Okay. Yeah. You're like, please do something. Yeah. So Chris Rock is the host. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was working. Not. They don't have to do that so close. It's right. freaking me out. It's <laughs> tiny, so yeah, we want to get it. Yeah, story of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's fast forward. 20 years later, we're in Kansas City, Missouri. Here, not far from Ferguson, Missouri. We know what just happened there. Has anything really changed in the last 20 years? Let's talk about Liz Pryor in 1979. Yep and what's transpired over the last 36 some odd years to 2016 to get you to where you are right now. There's tremendous adversity in there and I can tell yes. there's still some some hurt and ache around your oh, yeah. around your heart. It's not it's something like this stays with you all your oh, life. No you're shame. never totally I mean, you're known for playing uh, a lot of roles. I think you got 140 credits on yes. your IMDb, which is just remarkable. I started the Second City Midwest mm -hmm. guy from Kansas City uh, up in Chicago. You did this movie Anchor Anchor Girls. Oh. Yeah, Anchor, <laughs> Anchor Ladies. Anchor Girls. But these chiefs are a different team. You don't win 11 straight by mistake. They've got an all-world defense and they force good teams to play bad football. You can ask Brian Hoyer and the Texans about that. Either way, it all happens this Saturday at 3.30. Patriots Chiefs right here on KCTV5. I'll be on a flight tomorrow to Boston to cover the game and the next time I see you, I'll be live at Gillette Stadium. The Chiefs won their one and only Super Bowl 46 years ago yesterday. Wouldn't Super Bowl 50 be the perfect time to raise banner number two? Alexis. Rob, I have goosebumps. That was fantastic. And Rob, as he said, is heading to Gillette Stadium. As we look back at the first 50 years of Super Bowl history, it's hard not to look forward to the next 50. In 1969, the league had just a handful of teams where today the NFL seems ripe for expansion overseas, an international game with teams dotting the globe. I sat down with a man who is certainly in the know, Chiefs Chairman and CEO Clark Hunt. Well, I, I am chair of the International Committee. Canada's got the CFL, replete with their own Super Bowl, fondly known as the Grey Cup. The NFL has 32 teams, and the owners seem content to keep that number there. But every decade or so, the Shield seems to find a reason for expansion. But that expansion in the first 50 years of the NFL has remained squarely in the lower 48. Hawaii's got the Pro Bowl, but Honolulu has yet to get a team of their own for one simple reason. From the West Coast alone, the flight is almost six hours. Air travel shrunk the world in the 1960s with the introduction of the jumbo jet. But the NFL has never expanded beyond San Francisco in the West and New England in the East. And the last time I checked, 
teams weren't flying on the now defunct Concorde. But that could all change. In the world we live in today, right, it's globalizing in every aspect. Um, you probably see it from a sports standpoint most in soccer. Uh, soccer is a very international sport. Over the last decade, teams have made the trip across the pond to London to play regular season games. The Chiefs took the trip this past season, and despite the time it takes to actually get there, the league seems set on setting up a franchise in Europe. And you could even envision a, a division uh, that's based over there, which would help with some of the travel dynamics. London, Paris, Madrid, even Berlin have all been mentioned. And at some point, possibly within the next 10 years, we could have our first team established across an ocean. Hunt says there are still logistics to work out, but it's clearly doable. And for the game's popularity to continue to grow, they're going to have to look beyond our shores. The NFL realizes that to continue to grow, that uh, we're going to have to look beyond the U.S. Hunt wouldn't put a timetable on a team in London or Mexico for that matter, but who knows? Maybe we aren't calling Super Bowl 100 the Super Bowl at all. Maybe we're calling it the World Bowl, and the Chiefs are playing a team from London, also called the Royals. Oh.